I remember some time back in my early 20s, I believe, I was in Ottawa watching a parade uh, that involved, um, I don't know, it might have been Canada Day or some big state celebration, and Queen Elizabeth II was going to be in attendance. Um, I remember as her limousine sort of drove away from Parliament Hill in Ottawa, um, it went right past the uh, part of the crowd that I was standing in, watching the festivities, I guess. Um, she looked out the window, and uh, I had that proverbial stereotypical moment where possibly, I don't know, could have been all in my imagination, but our eyes met, and she cracked a little smile. Almost certainly it was in my imagination, but a lot of people who have had such an experience, be it with the Queen or Mick Jagger or uh, <laughs> today Justin Bieber or... Uh, you know, anyone like that. Um, apparently Barack Obama has that effect on people. Um, you get a chill, a pleasant chill, uh, a sort of, I won't say ecstatic feeling, but this wonderful feeling flowing through you. Now, I come from an Irish Republican background, and I'm supposed to be immune to this kind of thing, but whether you like it or not, when something like that happens, what flowed through me was this feeling of, oh my God, that was Her Majesty. But realistically, it was just a woman sitting in the back of a car. That's all that happened. But because of who that person was and because of the, uh, the mystique surrounding all of that, that everybody uh, in society places upon that person, that's the Queen of England, after all, and kind of the Queen of Canada as well. She's on all of our money. Everywhere you see portraits of the Queen to this day in Canada. Uh, you... You can't help but feeling some powerful surge of energy go through you. Um, the Hindus have a word for that. They call that darshan, where when you meet somebody um, or when you see something that has a very profound effect on you, this sort of profound energy, this profound sense of presence, this sense of being, this sense of proximity to something wonderful flows through you. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, from a human being, mind you. It can be from anything. Anything that has that kind of effect on you, that kind of over, overwhelming sense of awe or um, of the numinous or... I don't know. It's, it's just a powerful feeling, a profound experience. They call that darshan. That, if you ask me, is an elemental force that is not to be toyed with. <laughs> um, it's... A wonderful feeling when it happens to you, but it can be an extremely dangerous one um, if people abuse it. Now, um, religions, if you ask me, organized religions, manipulate darshan um, with varying degrees of success. The Catholic background that I come from, they manipulate darshan with extreme skill, and the effect that it has on people uh, is predictable. They you know, you can mold people by uh, manipulating that sense of the numinous, that sense of awe. You can um, you can get people to do whatever you want. I remember when Ferdinand Marcos, the Filipino dictator, was um, in the process of being booted out uh, back in 1986, probably about the same time, actually, as I saw the Queen. I remember seeing um, uh, Catholic priests... Um, directing the crowds in the Philippines. And you'd think that rioting mobs of people that are kicking out a dictator are not the easiest thing to control. But because the priests had such power over people's minds, that when the rioters got out of control, the priests simply said, wait, calm down, we're in, you know, we're getting somewhere with this, there's no need to start uh, bothering the riot police or anything, because the riot police are behaving themselves as well, and, and put those barriers back that you just tore down. And lo and behold, the crowds put the barriers back up and left the police alone. Now, that is power. That is power that is greater than uh, anything wielded by the most iron-fisted dictator. Um, the power over other people's minds, the power over other people's actions, um, contingent upon control of their minds. Or I shouldn't say control of their minds, but you have a co coercive force over their minds. And that Hindu concept of darshan is central to that. 
I mentioned in some of my other videos where I say why I'm not an atheist. Uh, it's because I don't want to, or there seems to be something implicit in giving up that feeling of darshan, that feeling of being overwhelmed and um, in, a, in a very profound way with beauty, with positivity, with uh, wonder, with uh, awe. Um, but one of the reasons why I think I've sort of, I believe that I've decisively broken with theism as well, is because I believe that if I try to engage in that kind of thing with other people, it inevitably ends up in some sort of organized context. And in an organized context, um, darshan can be wielded as a tool as opposed to something simply experienced. Um, there may or may not be a god, but I can never hang out with theists in at least a theistic context. I will always respect what they say, but I'll respectfully explain why I can't join in, or at least I can't ever feelingly join in with what they're doing. I won't say that it's haram, but I think that it's, uh, or, you know, forbidden is the, the word. Haram is what I'm, I'm just using the Islamic term for uh, something that you simply can't do, uh, taboo. Um, but it's something that I think that most people underestimate, this uh, business of darshan, this business of um, the thunderbolt, I guess uh, in some cultures it's called that. Um, it does exist. It's an elemental thing. It's a subconscious thing. It's a powerful thing that can get you unawares. And it's something that can be abused and even abused by people who think that they are assisting you. Um, belief and experience are fully personal things, if you ask me, and must always remain such. Uh, it doesn't mean that we can't have collective experiences, um, but I think that one must beware of collective experiences, which is exactly why um, I guess I sort of built up some sort of defense mechanism whereby I instinctively mistrust someone else's versions of this darshan, this, uh, this uh, sense of awe and profundity. Um, I guess, again, maybe I was just had a flashback to Irish Republican guilt after I saw Queen Elizabeth II. I had that feeling, that sense of profundity. She looked right at me. My God, it was Her Majesty. And then the Irish guilt kicks in. You're not supposed to feel that way. You're supposed to actually either, preferably just be completely indifferent and say, what a pile of old crap that is, this monarchy stuff. Uh, or perhaps you should feel out and out hostility. But no, I was uh, I felt the shock wave go through me, whether I liked it or not. Um, it happened. And I think afterwards, the maybe some little subliminal guilt that I felt said, ah, you recognize the power of that, eh? You recognize the power that, um, that Queen Elizabeth II has, and perhaps not her, but the fact that society, the society in which you exist has concentrated this power in her, whether she wants it or not, um, you recognize its ability even to affect you, and now you understand and you are wary of that kind of thing. Um, I suppose what it is is I recognize the true um, temptation of that sort of thing. How do you avoid temptations? Well, you have to be on guard against them at all times. Uh, you have to understand what direction they're going in. And in a sense, you have to kind of develop an irrational fear of them, or an, at least an irrational aversion, um, at least as a sort of a tripwire to alert you of what might be happening. It's all, I guess, a, an endless process of training one's mind. But um, darshan, and it's the Hindu version is probably the best word that I've seen so far, is something that is with us in everyday life all the time, even in the modern secular world. And I don't think that we pay nearly as much attention as we ought to, because it has effect. Uh, it has effects on all of us all the time. Um, that's the reason why I can never be a theist. That's one of, one of the many reasons. Um, but I think that it may be one of the more powerful ones, one of the more powerful deterrents to me ever um, seriously taking anything remotely connected to religion seriously. Um, not because I think that it's foolishness and I'm immune to it, but because I understand the 
weapons that it wields, deliberately or subconsciously, um, and their power. Um, that sense of profundity is something I want to keep, but I want to keep it as a purely and exclusively personal thing. That's my space. Religion makes it everyone's space. <laughs> Thank you.